Hey and welcome back. Um, this is kind of part two of my playing by ear series and in this video I'm going to give you seven different types of accompaniment that you can do with your left hand and how you put them in with the right hand melody that you've just learnt by ear. So in the first part of this video, I went through the song Yesterday by the Beatles and I showed you how I worked it out by ear. So assuming that you've worked something else out by ear, whatever song it is you're doing at the time, I'm going to show you seven different types of accompaniment you can do with your left hand. So rather than your left hand just sitting there doing nothing and your right hand's doing all the tune, lots of people say to me that they, they can work out the tune, they just haven't got a clue what to do with their left hand. Well, I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna show you what notes you can use and how I got there and seven different variations that you can do with that so you're not just hitting one note all the time so you can you can use variations all of these seven um, will not work in every single piece of music but that's why I've given you seven different varying um, accompaniments uh, seven different accompaniments to suit different types of songs that you might be putting it in with and there's seven different types that are varying in level as well so the first one just starts with really easy and then it kind of progresses up the scale to make it a little bit more complicated depending on on your experience as a musician and everything so if you want to learn how to put an accompaniment into um, something that you've learned by ear with the right hand please keep watching Okay, welcome to part two, where I'm gonna show you how to put a left hand accompaniment into, or left hand, seven accompaniment left hand ideas to put on the piano. This goes with part one of the video, which is playing by ear. And in that video, we learned how to do uh, yesterday by ear, or I was showing you how, how I would play by ear. So taking yesterday as an example by the Beatles, assuming you've got your tune now, and you've written that down, and you've learned that, and you're happy with that. something like that. The important thing is you must be happy with the right hand tune before you start poking in a left hand tune. Now um, I'm just going to show you seven different types of accompaniments that you can do on the, the left hand but I'm going to show you how I got there as well. So how you do this is completely up to you and what I mean is that I'm just going to start with one note in the left hand and I'm going to pick a note that's um, that's going to complement the sound of these two notes. So I think I might choose an F because that fits in quite nicely. We could do something else. So you could do it that way actually. You could just keep going around the piano and, and starting just just sounds the, the most pleasing to my ear so what I would do is write that down I'm going to start with an F so write that down on your on your bit of paper that you're going to start with an F so I've just happened to come across that just by trying all the notes that one sounded the best to me so we'll go with that if you want to change that a bit later that's completely up to you for now we'll go with an F I'm going to move to an E because that that's how I remember how the sound um, you know how the chords go from the original um, and it just sounds that's just how it goes so I, I really am just picking that up by by ear but if you want to stick on an F that's fine just depends what your level of proficiency in, in you know being a musician is so I'm gonna to move to another note now the note I'm gonna to move to is A now, how, how I got there would have just been trial and error, so... Um, G doesn't sound quite right, so let's go back and do it again. So D doesn't sound right, so keep going until you find a note that does sound right. Use your musical ear as well. If you, you know, if you feel like it's going a bit higher, then choose a note that's gonna go higher and things like that. But it really is just a case of trial and error. Um, for me personally, it wouldn't quite be so trial and error, just simply because you know I, I know I know from the right hand I can hear the harmonies in my head I know how the song goes so I know I know what chords are making up so in other words I know what notes are going to complement in the left hand the notes I'm playing in the right hand but how I know that is just from being just just years of being a musician and that folks is just something that that nobody can teach you just get that 
by learning harmonies and, and just, just listening to notes and just learning them. So I know if, if I could bottle that up and give it to you guys, I would, but unfortunately I can't. So the next best thing for you is just trial and error. Once you've found a note, stick it down, write it down. You know, I've I've written notes here and I've written them down as well. Um, you know, so it's easier to kind of uh, teach back to you guys. So carry on from where we are. Uh, the next note I've got is a D and I've just gone to a D. I think that sounds quite nice. So that's just what I've done there. So again, you guys can find what sounds nice. Back up to a C. Now I'm gonna go back to an F, down to a D. So that's it. So my my first type of accompaniment would just be using um, just be using semi brief notes. So just just one note per sort of chord, and that's exactly what I've done. So that's one of my seven types of accompaniment. We're going to embellish a little bit on that, but first of all, the first step is to find. My advice would be once you've found the tune, find the notes that go with that just by using one you know one finger, one note per sort of chord or one note per time you hear the music changing. Write that down and then you can do whatever you like. So I have written that down here. I'm not gonna show you that too much because it's really messy. Um, I have written those notes down here. So I know exactly, I don't have to go around remembering those, but I know exactly what I'm gonna do. And now I can teach you the other six kind of um, more embellishments to do on the left hand. So six more accompaniments. So this would be the first one. So I'm gonna put it together a little bit more fluid fluently now. So there you go. So if you want to move on to the next bit, that's fine. So now we've done that. The second accompaniment is that uh, you can do it in octaves. Actually, this, this was actually the first one, but I just, I told you to do the single notes, but you can do it now in octaves with the left hand. So octaves is just mean whatever note you've got up here, you double that down the bottom. So it just thickens it up a little bit. thickens it up. So there we go. So that's the first one. The second accompaniment that you can do using the same notes I'm just kind of uh, just developing on is using like a dotted rhythm with the left hand. harder to put in together with the right hand but just kind of go with the flow on just go with the flow and just 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 see what works for you something like that so the third one is to do block chords. So this is a little bit harder and this is where playing by ear comes in. If you know your chords and this is going to be a lot easier, if you don't then you might want to skip this one out possibly um, and just you know just just stick with the first couple or you can have a go at it. So you know the first note, sorry the first note is F not a G in the right in the left hand. So when you do that you can, see that doesn't sound right so going to do it the other way round. So when you're doing chords, you, a little tip, you don't want to go too low because it's going to sound, it's going to sound quite rumbly. So you, you perhaps want to keep it quite high. Another tip when you're doing chords as well is that the note, the main note that you're actually doing, the one that we've, the one that we've sort of written down here, um, I might actually write these down on a sheet and put it directly underneath if case, in case any of you want to know. Um, but if you, if you keep the, the, the main note, so the F, 
then the E, then the A. If you try and keep those towards the bottom of the chord, it just helps to um, kind of cement the tone of the chord. So if you just keep it, keep that main note at the bottom, it just it just helps to kind of, it helps you hear, it helps you hear the main note. There's a technical word here that I want to use, but I'm trying not to kind of confuse anybody, but it helps you keep, helps you keep the, the, uh, the, the tonic note alive there when you're hearing that, as opposed to kind of letting that note get lost in the mix. You can then start to lose the tune and start to lose the harmonies and things. You can just put a block chord with it. that's it. So the next thing, number four, you can do block chords with like that dotted rhythm that we did with the crotchets, um, we did with the, with the octaves. Just gives you a little bit of variation on that. Okay, number five, three, not, three note arpeggios. So this develops on from the chords that you've just worked out. Remember when you're working out the chords and you want to add in some extra notes, just go with what sounds nice and it will just be a case of trial and error. But you know, once you've got them, write them down and then you've locked them away. So you've got something like that. Then you can do four note arpeggios. These won't always work on everything, by the way, but these are just seven different types of accompaniments that I'm just giving you ideas to use. So these ones I wouldn't necessarily do from now on. Um, I might just do something different, um, but you can do four note arpeggios, which just would be. you've worked out the three note chord you're just so for a C chord C E G and you're just using that same note at the top you're just repeating that the, the, the tonic note the main note doesn't always work for this one but there you go that's your that's your four note arpeggio and then you can do arpeggios going up and down um, so they're a little bit quicker so this is um, probably for the more experienced player if you like um, it's really not going to work with this it's it's not going to work with that so but there, there's some anybody wants to be a little bit more adventurous with it you can do things like this and I'm just gonna make it up now something like that you know if I was going to do this for performance I'd work a little bit more on it but that's just kind of uh, they're just arpeggios your chords you can do a little bit like that so that was actually an eighth one there so there we go so there's there's seven different types of accompaniment that you can use on pretty much any song that you like choose an accompaniment that fits your ability choose an accompaniment that fits you know what what, what kind of style of song you're doing and all the all the different types of accompaniments I'll put in the description bar underneath so just just go and check down there so you can just you can have a look at them and um, you know so you just get an idea of what you can do so there we go so I'm um, a very very difficult video to film uh, I hope it's helped somebody and I hope it's kind of given you a little bit of an insight but it is very difficult to film as I say just because 
I'm trying to give you so many years worth of, um, you know, musicianship that I've just gained over the years. And the only reason why I can do things like these is just because I've spent years and years training and years and years working at it. So there we go. Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.